Well, next we will continue to talk about the, some properties of the proper functions. So this is the proper functions. Pi is equal to revenue minus cost. That is equal to the price times the production function that is output minus pk minus wl. So again, the proper function shares some properties. First, it is homogeneity to degree one with all the price and input price. So I mean, if it double p, double v and double, double the, double the w. I will get the exactly double of the profit. Okay, so not only double, if we multiply P V W by T, then the increase in profit will exactly be T. Okay. Second, the partial P pi partial P is non-negative. Partial pi partial V is non-positive, and this is non-positive. So it is in intuitively. So if the increase in price is not okay is less than zero that means the firms can increase profit by reducing the price okay and in this case the firm is not maximizing in the previous point therefore round pi round p should be positive at least not negative and these two also if partial pi partial v is positive that means they can increase the production while keeping the profit increase and cost be lower and in this case, the firm is not maximizing. Therefore, we should ensure that partial pi partial p is positive and partial pi partial v and partial pi partial w is negative. Finally, the partial 2 pi partial p square is negative. Uh, it's negative. Uh, should be positive okay so it means that the second order condition of pi and p is positive so this means that the price is convex say okay pi is here p is here then it is in this shape okay so this is because so actually improving this we what we are doing is to see the profit of the average of the profit of two price is higher than the profit of the price as a at the middle. Okay. So the average of the profit in P one and P two is higher than the average price and the pro the profit of the average price. Okay. So this is say this is P one. This is P two. The average you connecting it is higher than the average of the price average profit is higher than the average of the price so this is because assume assume there's a p3 which is the average of p1 and p2 okay so the profit of p3 is p1 times q3 minus vk3 minus wl3 divided by 2 plus P2 times Q3 minus V K3 minus WL3. So I assume P3 is P1 plus P2. And, okay, this must be less than P1 Q1 minus V K1 minus WL1 divided by 2 plus P2 Q2 minus VK2 minus WL2 divided by 2 because the cost minimization for P1 should be Q1, K1, and L1. Therefore, this profit should be greater than the output Q3 times all the one concept. Okay, and this second one is actually equal to profit of P1 VW plus profit of P2 VW divided by 2 so this shows that the condition here is greater than the average okay p3 is average of the price so this proved the result okay next we take a look at the sum lambda so in course function we have Schaeffer lambda and in proper function we have the we have a lambda called hotel link lambda okay hotel link lambda basically state that 
partial profit. Partial P is Q. Partial profit. Partial V is equal to negative K. And partial profit. Partial W is equal to negative L. So again, this is generated from the Lagrangian equations. Okay. Then we talk about the producer surplus in the short run. So in for the producer surplus, it means that so you are, say you are having our sloping supply curve. So the producer surplus P1 here is this area. So PS means the shutdown point, the price of the shutdown point. So the producer surplus is this trapezoid. Okay. So say now the price increased to P2. So the welfare gain for the consumer is equal to profit at P2, okay, minus the profit at P1. So this is the welfare gain. So this is equal to integrate from P1 to P2, the supply function, dP, okay. So this is just the, this area, okay. So what actually the producer surplus means? Okay, say we ignore the P P two. If the producer surplus, so if the price increase from the shutdown point to the P one, so how is the change in the producer surplus? So this is equal to profit at P one minus the profit at P S, the shutdown point price. Okay. So what is the profit at the shutdown point price? This is minus the fixed cost. Okay, assume K is the fixed cap, fixed factors. Then this is the profit of the shutdown point price. Okay, so here we can see that profit at P1 is P1Q1 minus VK1 minus WL1 plus VK1. So this is just equal to P1Q1 minus WL1. Okay, we can, therefore we can see that the product surplus actually is equal to the profit minus the variable cost while the profit is equal to total revenue minus the total cost okay so here the producer surface does not consider the effect of the fixed fixed cost okay next we'll go dig into deeper the concept of the input demand so now we have finished most of the production concepts okay we finished the maximize output maximizing conditions so next we are going to see that the input demand okay so this is again the profit function now we are trying to select the k and l such that the profit is maximizing we are no longer choosing the output we finish discuss the output now we goes to the input demand so we put the function s and function of k and l okay so the input demand is a function of P, V, and W. So this is different from the contingent demand. Okay, contingent demand is a function of Q, V, and W. So the difference is that for contingent demand, this is the demand with the same ISO quant, and for the this input demand, this is a demand after we consider the output effect in the productions. So what is the meaning of output, e output effect? So output effect is that when the price of input decreased, the firm will substitute that factor to another factors. On the other hand, if the input price de decreased, that means the firms can have a higher flexibility to increase the output. Then with a higher output, the firm will also arrange the capital input so this is the output effect okay so we are going to see that what will be the effect if there is change in wage okay so let's consider the labor so okay i'm going to see that when wage increase will the labor sub will the demand for labor increase or decrease or it depends on the given paradox okay we're going to explore explore this okay first is the one input case 
So I what I mean is that I just have the labor input. Okay, then the profit is P times F as a function of L only minus W L. Then I do the first order condition, set equal to zero. I will get P F L minus W equal to zero. Okay, then. I will replace this to be a function of labor and wage. Okay. Then I do the total derivatives. What I will get is partial F, partial L, DL, DW, plus partial F, partial W. So I differentiate with respect to W. Okay, total differentiate. Then I will get this result. Okay, then we can see that dl dw is equal to negative partial f partial w divided by partial f partial l. Okay, so this is equal to 1 over p f l l. Okay, so partial F partial W, I just go here, then I get that is negative 1, okay. So this negative 1, multiply this negative 1 is equal to positive 1. For the denominator, partial L partial F, partial F partial L, so I just do this, okay. P, F, L, L, so here, okay. So this is a negative value, because the second order condition, of the mark of the labor productivity is negative okay as a result we can prove that with the wage increase labor will be low demand for labor is low <coughs> so it seems that there are no given paradox in the input price so there are no such case that wage increase the demand for labor will increase how about in two input case so is given paradox appear in two input case so once again no Okay, so first, let's consider the profit maximizing point. At the profit maximizing point, the labor demand is equal to the contingent labor demand. So this concept is similar to the utility maximization. At the utility maximization point, the compensated demand curve is equal to the uncompensated demand. Okay, so now, I'm going to see that partial L partial w whether it is positive or negative okay then this is equal to partial lc partial w plus partial lc partial q dq dw or you can replace by partial q partial w okay so this is the substitution event keeping the isocon constant this is what we call not income effect because it's in production. This is the output effect. <laughs> okay, so by substitution effect, you, you know this must be negative. How about the output effect? <coughs> let's <coughs> let's look at the output effect. Okay, so Q is equal to partial pi partial P by the hotel link lemma. Then the first one, I keep it. And for the second one, I transform it to negative partial L, partial P. So I do partial pi, partial W. First, I will get negative L, again by the hotel link lemma. Then I put the partial pi, partial P to the denominator. Okay, after that, I try to derive a partial Q times partial Q here. Then we can see that there are two partial L, partial Q. Okay. Since at the cost minimization, LC is equal to L. So this is equal to just a square term. Then times partial Q, partial P. So this point, since this is to the power square square it so it should be positive and this term is again positive 
okay so if you're not convinced okay let's do one more step this is equal to partial partial pi partial p divided by partial p and this is equal to partial 2 pi partial p squared as we have already, already showed that the price is convex the second order condition is convex so we complete the proof this is positive okay that means the output effect is also negative as a result a negative value plus a negative value that means partial L partial W must be negative so given paradox cannot appear in the demand for inputs